To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Hey guys, Offhand Disneyland here. That's not my real name. Some of you should know that by now. Anyways, I'm going to be uploading a very special interview between me and Rolly Crump, the man responsible for the Haunted Mansion, the Tiki Room, It's a Small World, and a bunch of other different Disney attractions. I did this interview a couple weeks ago in Oceanside, California at the Oceanside International Film Festival. So big thank you to everyone involved in getting me in there, letting me interview Rolly Crump, Sterling Arno especially. Thank you guys all so much. And without further ado... Let's watch this interview. All right, everybody, I am getting ready to host a guest panel at the Star Theater, so let's go ask Rolly Crump and some filmmakers some questions. certainly ask the questions, but there is somebody more uh, able to answer the proper question, to ask the proper questions than I am. And there's a gentleman whose name is Dallin Smith. Now you may not know this individual, but he knows Disneyland. He knows things about Disneyland that probably Walt may not have known about. So is uh, Dallin, Dallin here? Yeah. Please welcome. Why don't you come on down here? And uh, Rolly, this is such an exciting experience for us all to see that magnificent documentary and uh, then to be able to ask you a question or two. So we have our questionnaire general. Uh, Dallin, and uh, why don't you scoot your chair over a little bit because we're going to have a microphone pass between the two of you. And if you would ask the question and, and then give the microphone to Rolly, okay, please? Right. Very nice to be here. Thank you. So now, Rolly, um, I'm sure a lot of people ask you this question all the time, but do you have any fun, cute, silly, or just small stories about Walt that not a lot of people would know? <laughs> yeah, I have tons of stories about Walt. You know, that he was one of the sweetest men I've ever met in my life, and a, a true genius. And he was just something very special. He never, he always talked directly to you. He never talked down to you. He was always interested in what you were doing personally. <clears throat> so I think he was an absolute love. I just great I love the guy. Yeah. All right. Now, I'm a massive fan of the Haunted Mansion, your work, and with the Museum of the Weird, I'm curious to know, like, what is your favorite piece of the Haunted Mansion today? Your favorite scene, favorite character, anything? Well, my favorite piece is all the illusions. Yale Gracie came up with illusions that were absolutely incredible. And if you took the illusions out of the mansion, it would be the mansion. So I think the illusions are what the secret was, and I felt very fortunate to work with Yale and help design some of those illusions. It was just great. All right. Now, I know that you worked on the Tower of the Four Winds for the World's Fair and for Small World. Yes. Yes, all right. And so um, you explained your inspiration kind of in that uh, documentary with the pencil clip. Um, what else inspired you while building the Tower of the Four Winds? Well, the little propellers that I had in my office really inspired me. I know there was a phone animation that I worked with, and I'd go into his office, and he always had this little stupid propeller going around. And I kept saying to him, how do you do that? And he says, well, it's a secret. And so I knew that there was a clip out of the, out of the uh, pencil. So I probably broke up, I don't know how many pencils and clips trying to get the damn thing to work, and I couldn't get it to work. And I kept going back into his office, and I said, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? And he said, it's a secret. <laughs> and this went on for, I guess, about six weeks. And so finally one day he says, I'll tell you what, Rolly, he says, 
I'll tell you, I'll tell you how you, I did it, but first I'll, I'll, I'll send one, I'll sell one to you. I said, good, I'll buy it. I said, how much is this a penny? So I said, I gave him a penny, and he, he gave me the little propeller, and then he explained to me about how to do it, because I had ruined more little clips trying to make them work, and what it was was a ballpoint pen that he would make the dent in, and so therefore the pen would 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 write a little uh, a circle, I mean a little thing that was kind of half round. I had been using, uh, God, what have I been using? Oh, nails, and the problem was the propeller would get caught, I mean the pen, uh, the, uh, pen would get caught in the, in the hard part that you dug out, so anyway, I was thrilled. <clears throat> so I actually, I built one, and I was so proud of it. It was a little uh, helicopter, and I had it in my office up on the wall, and it was going like crazy. This young kid came in from the art process department, and he said, um, how'd you do that, really? And I said, I'll tell you. I'm not gonna charge you a penny, I'll tell you. So I told him how to do it. So he went back to his office, and he built one. And so he called me, he says, I, I built one of your propellers, really, and I said, fine. Well, when I went in there and saw it, he had made, he'd taken cardboard discs, little soft discs, and glued them to his little propeller. Well, his propeller was bigger than mine, and that didn't set well. <laughs> so I went back, and if you remember some of the films there, I filled my whole room with propellers, and it was really great. We had a lot of fun. Very nice. Thank you. A couple more questions. Uh, you sculpted the gods and the goddesses outside of the tiki room. Um, can you explain how that process was? Because you said you had never sculpted before, so how exactly did you react to having to sculpt for the attraction? Well, it's all magic. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the thing is that um, uh, the fellow who was at the uh, sculptor, Blaine Gibson, helped build an armature to put the clay on. And he taught me how to put the clay on and how, around the armature and everything. And the, the clay we used was plastiline clay, which is a soft base clay. And we were working in this barn out back that was freezing. And I tried to get the clay soft enough to put it on the armature. And I realized that this is stupid. I'm in here freezing with my hands and I can't get the clay soft enough to work with. And it was beautiful out. So I put the, put the little guy in a set of wheels and took him into the parking lot. So the very first piece of sculpture I did, I did in the parking lot. <laughs> and, you know, it's so funny because I think back at it, people say, oh, you work in the company department for Disney? You must have a north light in a beautiful office. And I said, no, I had a parking lot. <laughs> Thank you. That's a true story. Mary Blair was a worker um, on It's a Small World. She designed the dolls and stuff. Do you have any stories about working with her with the style of uh, Small World on the outside? Yeah, Mary was a, a, a genius. Uh, she'd been a god. As far as I was concerned, uh, she'd been a legend at Disney Studios for many, many years because she was a stylist. She knew color inside out and backwards, and she was a delight. And I always loved Mary's work. And luckily, I got a chance to work with her, which was incredible. And she and I had a very similar love of the paints. We worked right on the two. A lot of people that were came to add a little black or they had a little white or whatever, and they never had the clue or the clean color. And working with Mary with clean colors was absolutely perfect. So she and I got along beautifully, absolutely beautifully. Thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So do you have any um, like special um, early? Because early on in Disney, you worked in the animation department. So, and you said you animated the spots on Lady and the Tramp. I've heard that you also worked on, or in Under One Dalmatians, I'm sorry. But you also worked on Lady and the Tramp and Peter Pan, is that correct? So what did you do with those two other movies? What did you work on on the two other movies, Peter Pan and Lady and the Tramp? Well, I was an in-betweener. I just did all the drawings in between the other ones, which is not very exciting. <laughs> you know, that's the thrill of it. But um, I think the one thing I remembered about the uh, spots I mean, you know, my animator said, well, you're going to do the spots, animate the spots on the puppies. I said, oh, Jesus. So anyway, I got started on it and everything, and I had the right formula to work with, and I worked on it. And I'm not kidding you. Hear that particular scene. It's probably on the film for maybe, I don't know, a minute and a half or two minutes. It took me six months to do the spots on the puppies. 
because you have to you have to watch the, you have to know how to put a spot on a puppy and then when he animates you, you gotta have the spot go with the puppy and you know you forget that he's all over the place and so you gotta stay right with him. So it was really it was a, an education that was unbelievable. <laughs> All right, well, I believe that is all the questions I have. Thank you very much. Now let me tell you, interviewing Rolly was one of the coolest things I have ever done, honestly. It was the coolest thing. I met the man who designed this attraction, my favorite attraction at Disneyland. So I honestly couldn't ask for anything more. It was great. I love talking with him. He's really funny. Um, I highly recommend to check out a documentary. It's called The Whimsical Imagineer. Uh, definitely go check that out. You can probably find it online somewhere. Uh, that's the panel of what I was there for. So anyways guys, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the interview, learned something new about Rolly Crump or Disneyland. Anyways guys, I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.